Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Films by Jeremy, and we'll just jump right into it. Today I want to show you my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K documentary handheld rig. That was a lot of words, um, cause there's lots of stuff. We'll start off with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I love this camera. I I've been using it for, I think about two years now. I bought it in late 2020 uh, as I seen so many videos about it and everybody was raving and ranting about it. And I was looking at my uh, choices, either the 4K or the 6K. And I liked the idea of the versatility of the micro four thirds plus being able to use a speed booster and being able to get that extra light from going in a, from an f1.8 to an f1.2. And I found that to be super useful, especially since uh, the micro four thirds all by itself doesn't let in a lot of light. I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, the 4K has been just a powerful camera. I used it all 2021 and pretty much my whole work year this year. And it's just been amazing. And of course it has its caveats. It's not for everybody. It's not the end all be all camera, but I love this thing. And I don't see myself giving it up anytime until they make a more refined version of this. With this camera, there's only one mounting port on the top here and uh, one on the bottom, which if you're gonna rig this up, it it's not ideal. Uh, so you're gonna need to get a cage. And what I got myself here is this classic small rig cage that fits both the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the 6K, but not the 6K Pro, since the 6K Pro is a lot fatter than this little guy here. And while I'm talking about this, I'm also gonna be building it at the same time. So this little cage comes with a very cheeky and handy Allen key, and you could just screw it in. The top and the bottom. I gotta say, I'm not used to being on camera. I, I do, I, I never do this. And it, honestly, I feel bad for my clients now. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself in their shoes. So there we have it. We're caged up and we're ready to start rigging. On the sides here, this didn't come with the, the camera itself, but I do have these little uh, locks for my HDMI cable and USB-C cable for the SSD. Let's talk about uh, lenses here. Of course, you knew this was coming. The Sigma 18 to 35, you you look at any film YouTube, you, you can't escape this thing, especially uh, when you pair it with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. As far as I'm concerned, they only make the EF mount versions of this lens. And um, so you gotta pick yourself up an adapter, especially if you're using the 4K version with the micro four thirds mount. If you're using the 6K, then you don't need this, but I like having this adapter. I use the Viltrox, the Viltrox adapter EF to micro four thirds too. I also have the Metabone speed booster, but the problem with that one I find is that it gives a pretty harsh vignetting. This one just gets rid of that. I originally bought it for my GH5 and then I've been using it on the pocket cinema camera. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and adapt that. There you have it. Let's put the lens together here. With this rig, you're already ready to shoot. You have your lens, you have your camera, just pop an SD card in here and uh, you're ready to go. But that's not why you're here today. You're here to see this thing looking like the Hulk. I don't know. So the next thing we're gonna do is storage, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know what, there's no order to this. We're just gonna go ahead and do things. I have here this, again, small rig. You're gonna notice that it's a recurring name. The small rig SSD holder. I'll try to have everything linked below in whatever order <laughs> we have this uh, built in. I always have it on the right side. I don't know, I see people adapt it wherever, um, all over the place, but I find this is, for me anyway, the best place to put it. Ah, uh, voila, the camera looks a little bizarre now with this little thing hanging off it, but you know, Samsung SSD T5. Do not get any other SSD. Don't go for the T6 like I did when I first bought the camera because it just doesn't work with the Blackmagic. Don't know why, They never. nobody ever warned me and I'm warning you now. So if you're gonna go and get yourself this rig, don't get the uh, T6. I think it's called the T6. I thought to myself, newer, must work, must be better, must be faster. It's not. This is a 500 gigabyte version. It's been more than enough for me. That's that. And over here, we have ourselves 
a nice little USB-C cable. I decided to remove the the rubber covers off the camera because because honestly, it's just so much easier to access rather than having to always move the nubs around. And I, never, I haven't had a problem with it. I've used this thing in the rain. I might be a little reckless though. So we have our SSD attached to the camera. Now we're really ready to shoot with this thing. Um, <laughs> 500 gigabytes. I don't know. I don't know what you're filming, but I've had long shoots and this has, you know, I've never filled it up. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is just quickly, I'm gonna add this little gear here. So this gear, is for your lens, so you could attach stuff like your little focus wheel here to the lens, uh, especially since the Sigma 18-35 doesn't have any gears attached to it. This will work just fine. Right on, it's nice and tight. So the next thing we have here is the NATO rail. Um, this is for stuff like your NATO handle. I hear it called NATO all the time. If I'm wrong, just correct me, that's okay. So yeah, I just attached this thing on here to the front of the camera. It's pretty long, but you'll see why later on. You could probably get a shorter version, but whatever. A little overkill has never hurt anybody. So the next step here will be the NATO handle. I love this thing. And now you're gonna see that we have our handle attached. You're able to run around with this thing. A little bit of stability here. It's not like a Ronin or a gimbal, but hey, this camera isn't really made for the gimbal. Oh, hey, you know what, while we're on it, if you ever wanna see my gimbal setup for this thing, drop a comment. I'd love to show you because I know that I've seen people have struggled with it before and I, I found a pretty easy solution. So you could really use this camera as, you know, a run and gun event gimbal camera. And the next thing is the monitor. I am using the Atomos Shinobi and this thing has been great. Uh, the monitor built into the back of the camera is super dim outside. On my honeymoon, I brought this thing along just all by itself with the SSD and I managed to use it for the whole trip. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I just uploaded it. And that's another thing too, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or 6K, whatever. You, you, you just simply can't go wrong with it. Like the image is gorgeous. The, the flexibility you have when using B-RAW is just insane. Of course, it's a bit of a learning curve still, but whatever, everything is. <laughs> everything in life is a learning curve and that's okay. Once you get the hang of this camera, it's like game over for anybody else. Next is uh, a battery for the, for the monitor, I guess. Um, there's no other way to power this thing up, I don't think, other than maybe like a false battery. But yeah, I just use a simple newer NP F750 and it works flawlessly, especially this little battery here. Cool, so that's all settled. We love that. Um, if you're using this F1.8 lens with this Viltrox speed booster, you're gonna want a, a variable ND filter or just an ND filter of any sorts, but honestly, this Freewell two to five stop variable ND filter is just fantastic. Does a job, love this thing. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I tried to put on the lens. I, this, I have the, I think 77 millimeter version. So you wanna get yourself also, these are KNF concept um, adapters for your lens to have larger filters on it. So that way you get yourself a large filter, you have a lens that's larger, you're able to put it on no problem. If you get yourself a small filter and you put on a large lens, it'll be crazy vignetting and you're gonna have to uh, zoom in or crop in and post. It's not worth the, the headache. Just get yourself a large ND filter, save that money. There you go, you're set to shoot outdoors now. Again, if you were to stop at this, you'd be laughing, honestly. Um, just one caveat is that the battery life on the camera itself, um, just with the, one of these Canon batteries, another thing, Canon battery, can't have enough of them. I have like eight that I bring with me on a shoot with this thing if ever I have just like the Ronin setup. But yeah, again, you know the drill. This camera, the battery, life on it, not good. Next is audio. Uh, when you're on location, it's nice to have okay audio. I bought this tiny little Deity microphone. There you go, you have audio, so, you know better than what's built into the camera. You can get yourself a bigger microphone as well, but I really like the smaller form factor here because everything else we're gonna be doing is bigger. Okay, so something else that you have is 
this handle. I like to have, you know, an extra handle, an extra point to grip onto for extra stability. This is, again, a small rig side handle. Very quality, small rig. It's what you come to expect. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the, my rail solution. Put the camera away for now. This is like a small rig rod handle. Honestly, there's different versions of these that you could get that might work a little better for your case, whatever you need it for. All right, so we're just gonna attach this here to the bottom of the camera. Um, normally, I have this rig built out before showing up to the gig. I'll just like toss it in the car with me. And uh, there you go, just like that. The camera now tips over. But that's okay, because we're gonna be adding weight here, distributing it even more. So I have these two, I believe these are 12 inch small rig rails. Slide these right in to the holes here, just like that. Tighten it up. But again, when you're making one of these rigs, you wanna get that weight distribution on point so there's no side heavier than the other, as people tell me. But at the same time, I haven't noticed a huge difference um, whether it's weighted perfectly or not. But I guess it's those small differences that make a world of difference. So like I mentioned before, the battery on the Black Magic isn't great. Um, and so the solution that I've always looked forward to using is a V-mount battery. Now, I just got this last year. This is my, the last thing I wanna do with my camera is get the V-mount, get the rails to have basically unlimited power. Next year is the battery. This is the Momin 99. This is a solid battery too. Kind of matches a little bit of the color scheme here with the red and black, red and black. Now we're just gonna snap the battery on and uh, you get yourself a little shoulder mount. I find this is really nice. It, it feels good to hold, you know, when you're shooting kind of like that against the chest. Gives you a bit, again, a bit more support. Next here is, surprise, surprise, not small rig. A Tilta mini follow focus wheel. Love this thing. It's cute. Focuses very smoothly, and it's small. Tilta, shout out to them. They make great things too. I just, I seen small rig and like a mindless consumer bought into it because hey. And now you wanna connect the power to the camera. And we're just gonna plug this into the power source of the camera. I have this plate for tripods. Um, I just toss it on. Uh, my tripod's currently being used for my A camera here. If you're curious, I'm using the Lumix S5 as my A camera. Just, just picked up that bad boy and it's been such a great, just easy run and gun for a smaller client's camera. Again, this rig here that we are building is more for your documentary, maybe longer form content. You know, it just makes sense to have a camera that you could just use all day. So yeah, here we have it. Again, you don't need all this stuff. This this is just stuff. This is a lot of stuff. You don't, it's not necessary to your build. You can build this out however you want. You can use it just straight out of the box with a lens and SD card and a battery. It just really depends on what you need it for and what you want to do. So I won't ever encourage anybody to build it out like this because it's completely overkill and quite frankly unnecessary, but it looks cool. That's why we do it. We want to make videos look cool. We want the whole process to be cool. We want your clients to be blown away with what you do and what you bring. If you just show up with a little DSLR, you can make probably the same quality that this will make you. But again, it's the wow factor and, you, and that's what you want to bring to any shoot. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm hoping to make more videos in the future, maybe some vlog style things, which are, you know, incredibly original. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. If you liked the video, please like it. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. That was a train wreck. That's okay. We're done.